Welcome again at my, yes, you know it, paint job. And it's time for a new, you know it also, paint job. I like to take some German cycle parts from THM and lightweight carbon sports and do a new video of a retro fade pattern paint job. But at first I have to put these parts on my table to show you this nice stuff and then I like to show you what I will do with these cycle parts. So one moment please. What I have here are big boxes, an Orgestalt frame set, lightweight Meilenstein wheel set and also a THM clavicular crank set and these are the parts I need for my new paint jobs. And these parts belong to a guy living on Hawaii and he likes it colorful as I do, so it's time to show you what I will do with these parts. So come in new frame. That's the design I will do on the frame and the wheels. and. Maybe some of you say, oh my God, why is he painting these lightweight parts? Because I can do it. And because there are also people living the custom painting way and the custom painting lifestyle. And it's simply my job. So I will do this design on these lightweight and THM parts. And if you're interested, stay tuned. And I like to show you how I will paint these nice parts. But at first, let's do a little unboxing of the frame wheels and the crank set. So let's start with the paint job. I will start with the wheel set and the first step is to remove all the original lightweight decals on these wheels. Then I can prepare the rims, mask the spokes, primer these wheels and I'm ready for the nice red and orange custom paint job. There's a lot of prep work to do on all the parts I like to paint and it's every time the same process I have to go through sanding and masking. Not very interesting and time consuming. So if you want to do the prep work yourself, be aware to invest some hours. The preparation of such a wheel is an hour or two. The preparation of a frame, four to five hours, sometimes the whole day. So take your time and invest the time in a good preparation because that's a must for a perfect paint job. I'd like to meet you at the paint booth for the interesting part, spraying of primer and color, the main part of a custom painting. But before I have to finish all the prep work and then I'd like to meet you at the paint booth. So see you there. And here we are at the paint booth with all parts prepped, masked and prepared. Behind me the front wheel and the frame and right behind you the back wheel and the fork. I loaded the big gun with some nice white carbon primer and now it's time for some action. So let's go ahead and let's prime all these parts. If you have an open and woven carbon fiber material like on these rims, you have hundreds of little pinholes in between these carbon fibers. Pinholes are little holes in between every fiber and the layers of the carbon material and they need to be filled before we can start painting. And to fill these holes I use the primer. The carbon primer is used to get adhesion between the carbon and the layers of color but it's also used to fill these little holes. You can use different primers, a white one as seen on this wheel black one or also transparent ones depending on the color and the clear coat you like to use. I will use a light yellow and also a light red so I use this white primer to get a brilliant color 
and now I have to sand the surface very well to remove all these little holes. If I don't sand well, these holes can be seen as little black points in the color and also as a dent in the clear coat and that's not what I want. I like to produce a shiny and glossy surface without these little dents and without the black pinholes. So I have to sand all the parts very well and that's what I have to do now and then I can start with the color. Everything is ready and now comes the part that loves everybody most on custom painting, the color. You have seen that I have mixed some colors and I will start with a typical 60s to 70s color combination from yellow to red and I have mixed three tones. A yellow it's called traffic yellow, very bright, an orange called light orange and the red called granada red. So let's load the guns, change to the paint booth and let's spray some color on these nice white primer parts. I've put some color in the guns and now it's time for action. We will start with the wheels and do a horizontal fade and that means I will start with yellow on top, fade down to orange and at last I will fade down to red. It's important to do the same thing on the other side of the wheels so that our both sides of the wheels have the same fade. Let's start with yellow. And here it is the horizontal fade on the wheels. They have to dry 10 to 15 minutes. Then I can take them back to the studio where I like to show you how to apply all the graphic elements and the logos on these wheels. But in the meantime, I have to do also a fade paint job on the fork and the frame. Same way I did this job on the wheels. And when I'm ready, I like to show you all the graphic stuff in the studio. So let's see you there. I'm back at the studio and it's time for some logos and graphics. The first big part is done, the fade on the wheels and the frame set, but that's not all. Now it's graphic time and I started with the fork. You can see the difference in front, you can see the fade from red to yellow and in the back I added some of these graphics in orange and white and I think these graphics make the design look more interesting than such a single fade. So I will do the same on the wheels and the frame and I will show you how I do this on the wheels. You can see that I have to add some triangle squares, patterns or whatever and two white logos and that's what I like to do. In the background you can see the fade wheel and in front the new design I have to apply on these wheels and to apply these graphics I use my little airbrushes. I load them with the three color combination of yellow, orange and red and added also a white as the fourth color. And what I also need is a lot of tape in different sizes to mask these areas before I can spray them on. And if you want to, you can follow me during the steps. I will start with the wheels and I will also add these patterns on the frame. So let's start.
time for a little freestyle design on the THM clavicula crankset. I painted it in the same orange as the midsection of the frame. And now I will do freestyle masking with tapes around these cranks. And I will paint some sections in red and yellow to match the wheels and the frame. And I will also paint the THM clavicula logo in white. And that's it. So let's do it. And here we are, I have to remove the inner forms of the A and then this crankset is ready for some clear coat. Next step are the logos on the wheels and you've seen how I made these logos and it's every time the same. Masking, spraying, demasking, finish and clear coat and the parts are ready so let's do it.
this custom painting project is the frame and I have to add also some triangles, rectangles and also some logos like I did on the wheels and the crankset. And to do so, I combined all these forms to one single form. That's the masking sheet for the down tube. I will apply this on the down tube. Spray the first color, the white. Then I mask some smaller sections and I will spray the orange and the yellow and I will do this all over the frame. And when I'm ready, I will apply the logos, spray them in white and my custom paint shop's ready for some finish, for some clear coat. And when all these steps are done, I'm ready with this custom painting project. So let's start to mask the down tube and let's spray the colors on the frame. And I'm ready for some white. I loaded a small gun with a small nozzle needle combination with white. And now I can fill all the areas which are demasked with the white color. All the colors are on and I have to remove the masking tape. It's very sticky, so I have to take my time. I don't want to separate the new color from the frame. And when all the masking tape is removed, I can show you the new graphics on the frame. All the graphics, rectangles and triangles are on the frame and the design and paint shop come together. But there's one thing left and that's the logo typing. And for the logo typing I have to add one more color, a light gray. And I will use this light gray on the down tube and C tube on the areas where I painted these white sections. You can see it on the down tube. 
I have to spray the big white Urgestalt logo and some of these letters hit this white section and are unrecognizable. So I will spray these letters in a light gray only in the white section. So all the letters are recognizable and you can read the complete Urgestalt logo as it is. And I will do the same with the lightweight logo on the C-tube. But at first I have to arrange and cut all these logos with a graphic software and my sign maker. And when all these logos are cut, I can apply the stencils on the frame as usual and spray them in white and some of these letters in gray on the white sections. So let's cut all the stencils for the logos, apply them on the frame. And that's the last step in this paint job before I will start to finish and clear cut this frame. All went well, I have a nice Urgestalt logo on the down tube, so let's remove the mask and let's check it out. And here it is. I have to remove some inner forms and the logo is ready. Thank you.